Shalewa spent a lot of time with her sister's fiancé planning for the wedding. Her sister's fiancé most times found it so difficult to differentiate both sisters that one day he mistakenly hugged and kissed Shalewa. In a community blessed with land and living therein are the most peaceful individuals. Once upon a time, there lived a family blessed with identical twin daughters named Shalewa and Abisola. Their parents doted on their daughters so much and ensured they lacked nothing good. It was so difficult to tell one apart from the other. They grew up in a Christian home where strict morals and values were instilled in them. Their parents ensured to send them to the best of schools up to the highest level of education. However, though Shalewa and Abisola are very identical, their behaviors weren't. Shalewa is the very calm and gentle one, so obedient to the core, and also loves and adores her twin so much. But Abisola is the strong-headed twin, so daring and did not take her Christian life serious. She would flirt with all the men in town and would live the wild life. She kept that part of her life a secret from her parents with the help of her twin sister Shalewa, who would always cover up for her. Abisola was a carefree person and would step on anyone's toes so long as she gets what she wants. This was unlike her twin sister Shalewa, who wasn't a selfish person and had an open heart. She was a very dedicated Christian and loved to do the work of the Lord. But her sister always seemed to find means to make her lie or do things against her faith. They were now adults and very ripe for marriage. For their mother, even though Abisola and Shalewa were both identical, she could easily differentiate them from the tone in which Shalewa used in talking as it was so swift and very soft. Shalewa was mostly at home and hardly goes out except to church. Her mother and father would always encourage her to go out so that suitors could meet her. But given she was a very shy person, she prefers she remains in her little shell called home. However, as one would expect, her sister Bisola attends parties, nightclubs, and so on. They were the exact opposite of themselves when it came to character. Not so long afterwards, Abisola came home one day with a suitor who she says wanted to marry her. This gladdened her parents' heart and Shalewa, her twin, was so happy for her sister. Even though she wondered why no one had come for her hand in marriage first. Instead, they came for her sister. In her mind, she knows her God-sent man will come eventually. Shalewa was a big part of the wedding as she was the one running around to arrange for her sister's wedding as Abisola wasn't interested in anything stressing her. She just wanted to have fun and so in this period Shalewa spent a lot of time with her sister's fiancé planning for the wedding. Her sister's fiancé most times found it so difficult to differentiate both sisters that one day he mistakenly hugged and kissed Shalewa. She was so embarrassed and told him that she wasn't his fiancé. He apologized and said, I wonder how I can tell the both of you apart. Shalewa would tell her sister to please take over her wedding and plan it, that she isn't the one getting married. Abesola would reply by telling her to relax, that it will soon be over. Besides, she should use it as an experience for when she will eventually get married. Shalewa would just give a heavy sign and continue with the wedding preparation. The day for the ceremony came 
and Abisola made a very beautiful bride. She tied the knot with her husband and the celebration ended well. Shalewa went about her daily routine for months till one day her sister came visiting and asked her to take her place in her husband's house for a week that she had somewhere to be. Shalewa refused and said, what do you mean by I should take your place in your husband's house for a week? You want me to pretend to be you for a week? Abisola begged her sister that her husband won't notice. Shalewa shouted at her sister saying, Are you alright? Why not tell your husband you won't be available for a week? She said it's complicated. She replied saying, Oh. Shalewa asked her to explain what she meant by that. But she told her sister that she rather not tell but promised to explain later. Shalewa refused to do such, but her sister promised to help her with the money she needed to open her own shop. She further pressed Shalewa for just this one favor. Shalewa promised she would think about it. Then Abisola gave her a spare key and invited her to come to her husband's house the next day in the afternoon with a response. To which Shalewa replied her saying, Okay, I will be there. She hugged her sister and left. The next day, when she got there, she did not get a response when she knocked and so made use of her spare key and gained entrance into the home. She went to the kitchen but also met her absence. She then saw a written note of detailed instructions addressed to her on how she should pretend to be like her for a week. The note also stated that she will be back as promised and will fulfill her promise of getting her a shop. She was so furious and asked herself how she got herself into this mess. Shalawa thought of what to do in this situation. Should she go back home and ignore her sister? But she thought that it will put her sister in so much trouble and might make her husband question how she was raised and this would definitely trouble her aged parents whom she wouldn't want to be worried about Abisola. Shalawa thought to herself, well, it's just one week, right? I will just look for a means to always leave the house. Abisola's husband walked in on her as she was still thinking and startled her. She greeted him and as he approached her for a kiss, she avoided having contact with him and said, Welcome home, sir. How was your day? He looked at her puzzled and said, Sir, since when do you call me, sir? Is everything all right? She said, Sorry, darling. My mind went far. How are you? He replied saying, Fine. She asked him what he will have for dinner. Surprised by this question, he replied saying, You're going to make dinner? And she said yes. She asked, What's wrong? He said nothing. That he can't remember her ever making him dinner. That he was already used to sorting himself out. She was already shaking at this point, afraid she would mess up the plan. He said, Well, I want to go take a shower now. See you in a bit. He then left after giving her a peck on her forehead. Her heart skipped so many beats and she wondered why. She went about in the preparation for dinner and when it was set, she called for him to come. They sat at the dining table and with a smile on his face, he asked if today was my birthday. He answered of course not. He said, I could get used to this. She smiled and continued with her meal. Her sister's husband, already happy with her that night, tried to be intimate with her. But she told him that she was on her period. He then said, you just finished seeing your period like three days ago. She said, I don't know what happened. I just got my period again. He decided to let her be and went to bed. That night, she thought to herself that she hopes her sister actually comes back soon. Imagine having to lie to this poor man all through the night. 
that he doesn't deserve that. She thought to herself. She said, well, it's just a week and we'll try to stay out of trouble. The next day, she woke up and made breakfast for him. He looked amazingly at the meal and asked, not the usual tea and bread. Wow, I'm impressed. Thank you, she said. She also told him she will be going out today. He asked where. She said to the hair salon. He said, okay, I will see you later in the day. He also praised her mother's dressing and for not showing too much body. I love it, he said. She replied saying thank you. She hurriedly ate her breakfast and left the house for her home. Back home, she met her mother who asked her where she had been. She said she was at her friend's place. Her mother replied saying it's unlike you. She replied her mother saying, you are the one disturbing me to mingle. Now I am doing that, it's a problem. Her mother said no, but at least she should have informed her. She said, well, that's what I'm doing now. She told her mother she came to pick up a few things that she will spend the week at her friend's place and won't be back till next week. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Please click on the subscribe button to support us. Turn on the post notification to get notified when I upload a new story. Like, share, and comment your thoughts. Till then, bye. Thank you.